Good morning, everyone. It's Will Ringrose here with your Rapeseed Market Update. Well, these markets certainly aren't for the faint-hearted at the moment. Um, in just as a brief overview, in the US, the export facilities in the Gulf are now largely back up and running following the damage that got caused by Hurricane Ida three or four weeks ago. Um, weather now shows some showers in the eastern Corn Belt, but largely warm and dry in the western Corn Belt. We have started harvest in the US now. Um, we're about 6 to 8% complete. Yields are pretty poor to begin with. However, I think that was largely expected given the state of the crop, and it is expect, expected to, for them to improve as we get further in in the next couple of weeks. Oil markets remain interesting. I mean, obviously, we saw some consolidation through the back end of August into the beginning of September, um, but energy markets, as we've all seen, it, has, has rallied considerably in the last few weeks with crude oil rallying from sort of the mid-60s up to $73 in, uh, in a very short space of time. Lower, lower production out of the U.S. caused by Hurricane Ida obviously lent some support to prices. Um, but I think, you know, overall, OPEC are, are estimating much firmer demand for, for oil in general through the back end of 21 into 2022 and onwards. Federal oil prices, I mean, they have rallied, but certainly not to the extent that energy prices have. Um, Palm oil production was estimated to be lower, probably due to the fact that we can't get labour into the plantations still. Um, we, we had a little bit of nearby increase in demand from India, uh, which certainly lent some support, support to prices. Uh, prices are firmer, but they're still off high. Going forward, it is rumoured that India will cut consumption slightly, um, and it was also rumoured that Germany will, will look to cut palm usage in the biofuel ration from 2023 onwards. Um, but that hasn't really affected prices in, in the last couple of days. Soy oil has uh, traded off recent lows. Uh, I think that was supported at the start of this week by the announcement of the US government that they will try and use more soy oil in the biofuel ration in 2022. Seed wise, uh, I mean, markets have rallied considerably since our last report. Um, Canadian canola production is now estimated to be 14 million tonnes. I think we were looking at a crop close to sort of 18, 20 million tonnes at the start of the growing season. In fact, StatsCan came out with a report um, just last week that stated we're probably looking at a, uh, at a crop around 13 million tonnes. Um, harvest is now in mid-flow, but obviously seed is slow to come forward, um, even though prices are close or just trading off highs. Um, I just think, don't think there's a seed availability around for the farmer to be confident enough to sell it. Australia, I mean, they are set to have a crop now of over 5 million tonnes. Um, time will tell. However, that still won't fill the gap left by the shortfall we're seeing in Canada. Matif rapeseed, as I'm sure you're all aware, has, has rallied considerably um, in the last week or so. I mean, we keep breaking new highs pretty much on a daily basis now. Um, we're just trying to attract seed out of the market, whether that be domestic or imports. We're now trading at a huge premium over Canadian canola, um, but still not a lot coming forward. Oil markets haven't rallied to the same extent uh, as, as what seed markets have, uh, and that in the short term may signal the start of some price rationing at these higher numbers. Uh, but I mean, time will tell. UK prices, however, you know, sterling trading within a cent range of 16 to 17, uh, I think prices are now at contract highs. Uh, and they have been for the last couple of days. Um, going forward, it, it would all be about if margins get squeezed, prices will have to come lower. Um, but as I say, time will tell. Thank you.